One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Good morning, guys. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. So, I'm James Hake. This is The Hake Report. It is Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019. It's the last month of the 2019 year, and it's going to be 2020 soon, and hopefully that'll be a good year. I'm rubbing my hands together for a good one. But for now, we have to deal with this. So, um, we're live in the 9 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time Hour, live from Los Angeles, on Jesse Lee Peterson's stream, on YouTube, etc. And I will be getting to your calls. Appreciate you guys calling in. Oh, some very interesting calls. I get criticized every time I answer questions, ask, ask, take calls about the biblical question, even though it is kind of an interesting topic to me. So maybe I should just... Deal with the live chat's criticism of it. (laughs) Because Jesse Lee Peterson, if you guys don't know, is a host of the show that comes on before me. (laughs) If you guys are tuning in only for my show. And um, he has these biblical questions. I used to hate the biblical questions as a listener of the Jesse Lee Peterson show. Because I would just be annoyed. They're like too simple and yet they're impossible to answer sometimes. And... Um, I'm like an intellectual, and like I know the Christian stuff, as in like the Bible, somewhat. And so anyways, oh my gosh, I have some very good Hake um, News-themed calls for you guys. But, um, quick announcement. Tonight, well, it will be this late afternoon, which is weird to say, 5.30 p.m. It is dark by then, practically. Um, Pacific Standard Time is a new archive of the Sunday service from February 1st, uh, 2009. Do You Know God? It's it's out today on premiere at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which would be 8.30 Eastern and all that. So, um, 7.30 Central, 6.30 Mountain Standard Time. So make sure you check it out. That's on the Bond or Building the Man YouTube channel. It's an excellent channel, premiering on that channel only. And then it does, I believe, upload automatically to the Bond Rebuilding the Man Bit Shoot channel. B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. I have to say it like fast, kind of like that. Um, dot com slash rebuilding the man. That's an excellent bit shoot channel. Jesse Lee Peterson has three bit shoot channels, and then I have one. So, um, make sure you check that out. Um, so, b- before I get to calls, hang tight, callers, real quick. I just want to make some real fast points. We'll see how fast I can plow through this. Because yesterday, I spent a lot of time on, um, Gabrielle Union, and I have more to say about her. Gabrielle Union being a black female actress. And SJW. Unfortunate. She's, t- she's... 47 years old? That's too old to be an SJW, but she's black, so I guess they stay SJW older. Actually, Bernie Sanders is even older, having heart attacks and stuff, and he's practically an SJW. But anyways, let me make these quick points. I have photographs of the victims of the London Bridge terrorist attack, and I know some of you don't care because it's not America, but um, just let me quickly tell you guys about this stuff because it makes some interesting points I think so I forgot to tell you yesterday I did report it in Hake News yesterday I think the third hour yeah Monday December 2nd hour 3 top of the hour of Jesse Lee Peterson's show the other liberal who was killed by the Muslim on Friday in the stabbing attack on London Bridge and the building next to it Fisher something fishmongers something like that Some building that was right next to the London Bridge where they were having this conference. 
Liberal Conference. Drudge reports London was on alert over terrorism copycats, which is another sign. Jesse Lee Peterson makes the point. People are sheep and copycat crimes and copycat terrorism and, you know, copycat mass shootings, school shootings and all those things are just another sign that people are sheep. They don't think for themselves. They're kind of inspired and influenced by the world around them, the evil around them. So the Times, I think of Times of UK reports six of the nine men, males, I should say, right, who were jailed in a 2012 terrorism plot of whom included this stabber, this London Bridge stabber from this weekend, Usman Khan, were involved in. Six of the nine who were jailed were released and back on the streets. So now I think the London cops are like, or the UK cops are like, "Uh uh-oh, we better check up on these guys. (laughs) So one of his friends was already arrested. Usman Khan was, of course, killed, shot dead. He was wearing a fake bomb vest reportedly, and he had stabbed and killed two people, and three people were injured. Two were still hospitalized, last I heard, as of the other day. The, the Guardian reports that Boris Johnson ignored one family's plea not to exploit the victim's deaths. He said, but Boris Johnson ignored it and said, a lefty government was responsible for this terrorist being freed, and it's true. Duh! But the liberals, you know, The media only listens to liberal victims, uh, so-called victims in their families, and people, friends of the victims. With this um, March Against Our Lives, they call themselves March for Our Lives, the um, Stoneman Douglas shooting down in Florida at that, you know, well-to-do county where this guy, this young guy that was disturbed, shot up the school in one of the more recent things. I think it was Valentine's Day 20. 18, something like that. They only listened to the, ki- the so-called kids who were pro-gun control. And over in another, sh- another shooting, like maybe the Isla Vista shooting by the incel guy, who didn't call himself an incel, but um, the father of a, man, of a young man who was killed was pushing gun control. They don't, the media prop up them. They don't prop up the people that they disagree with, because the media is liberal, of course. So anyways, um, murdered Cambridge student Jack Merritt, I have pictures of him, various pictures of him. Ones that maybe you haven't seen if you haven't been watching. Jack Merritt, his father, David, tweeted, Don't you- there's a picture of Jack Merritt posing on a cool mural thing, or what is that thing called when they make a mosaic? I don't know if it's a mosaic or a mural or a mixture, but it's cool. But he's dead now, Uh, 25-year-old Jack Merritt. His father, David, is a liberal, atheist, left-leaning from the UK, and he said, don't use my, he tweeted saying, don't use my son's death and his his and his colleagues' photos to promote your vile propaganda. And he's talking to the, the somewhat conservative people over in UK who want to protect the country from the Muslims, Muslim radicals. Jack stood against everything you hate for, you stand for, hatred, division, ignorance. But this David guy, the David Merritt, the father of Jack Merritt, is the one hating on Boris E. Johnson. The liberals, the leftists, are the, are the haters. And yeah, you can find hatred on the right, too. Most, most people, period, are hateful. Jack Merritt, so here's... Some more pictures of Jack Merritt and some background on him. He was a course coordinator for the Cambridge University-run liberal program called Learning Together, hosted by their Institute of Criminology. Criminology is a fake science. They battle with people like Heather MacDonald, who debunks the lies of Black Lives Matter and stuff. Heather MacDonald has been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. And on that interview with Jesse Lee Peterson, she really went in on these criminologists who hide and disguise the reality of black crime because they're politically correct, as most so-called scientists are, academics. Because they rely on government money and they're educated intellectuals, which means brainwashed liberals. So this conference, this Learning Together Rehabilitation Conference, criminal rehabilitation conference was right next to the London Bridge. That's where this stabbing happened. So this boy, Jack Merritt, his family called the 
the Muslim terror attack. This is so ridiculous. I like can't help but laugh, but it's so evil and it's so bringing more trouble on yourself. They called it this Muslim terror attack an isolated incident. Show more pictures of Jack, or just run through them if you can. They said that Jack believed in rehabilitation, not revenge, and that he always took the side of the underdog. And I have pictures, too, of this second killing victim. The Guardian reports the police named her as Saskia Jones, age 23. A white female. Jack is white. Saskia is white. Another prisoner rehabilitation volunteer. Jones's family, Saskia Jones's family, said in a statement, Saskia had a great passion for providing invaluable support to victims of criminal injustice. Criminal injustice sounds to me like a liberal word because they take the side of the criminals. And I'm sure there's maybe some cases of injustice, I guess, of course. But um, they, they highlight that in order to... Criminals tend to vote Democrat or liberal leftist. Female, there's isn't there a pretty little girl, young girl, I mean, young lady, age 23, killed. But she was putting her, she put herself in this position, to be honest. You hang around these criminals thinking that you're helping them change their lives around. One of them snaps and, and murders in the name of Islam, I think. I think it was in the name of Islam. Female professor Lorraine L. Lorraine R. Gelsthorpe, I don't have a picture of her, but... She's the director of this Institute of Criminology at Cambridge University, where both of these victims had studied, murder victims had studied. She said that Saskia had a strong belief that people who have committed criminal offenses should have opportunities for rehabilitation. So these, you know, young liberals get brainwashed to feel sorry for criminals, and then, and then they get it in the end. Lorraine said that Jack Merritt had a passion for social and criminal justice. You can't have a... (laughs) I mean, I guess you can have a passion for both if you're a passionate person. This guy. Poor guy, but he he was a passionate person, according to his female professor. Liberal university professor. And you... But social justice and criminal justice do not go together. Justice is punishing criminals for crimes basically, right? And making them pay redress in some way, if they can. But um, social justice does not exist because it's not justice. So anyway, I just wanted to lay that all out there. Hopefully I got all that stuff off my chest. Let me get to some calls, and then I'll talk about like this establishment weakness, maybe this accuser mess. I have something to say about this development to this Epstein story. As you may know, if you've been watching me, I do not feel sorry for the victim, the so-called victim, who's speaking out about this Epstein thing. She's actually a perpetrator as well, according to her own words. Um, And the media is hyping this, so I don't really, I don't really jump on the bandwagon about this Epstein story. I'm sure Epstein himself was evil. Most people are evil. And I'm sure that most of the people who are loudest about this evil are evil themselves. Maybe no better. Anyways, let me get to some calls. Ah. Greg out of Wilmington, Delaware. Nice to hear from you, Greg. Hey, James. Amazing. How you doing? Doing fine. What's up? Good. I'm going to tie two of your stories together. Hey, Gr- Greg, are you on speakerphone or something? Can you come closer yeah, to the phone? I am on a regular phone. I, uh, your uh, craft producer made me get it off my headset, which I actually like better, and I'm just on my phone. Okay, you're sounding better, though. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, tying together this uh, Cambridge person and the Chinese students with their high scores, this I think ca- I can speak. Okay. You're talking about these two Cambridge uh, victims and the yeah, Chinese? The victims, right. And the, the Chinese uh, 15-year-olds that have the highest test scores? Yeah, I reported that on Hake News at the top of one of these hours today. Yeah. And I, I can tie that with my own life. So I've been in both positions. I've actually been to Cambridge and slept overnight there, so I can tie that in as well. Okay. But I graduated 
seventh from the bottom of my high school class, and I would have been dead last had it not been for A's in physical education. However, <laughs> when I went to college, I got uh, graduated summa cum laude. Nice. But I never felt so dumb as the day after I graduated from college. And I went about two or three years with being this, like, intellectual person that kind of lost my intuition. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, I was always digging from what I had learned to solve problems. Right. And I think that um, what you're going to have is the true creators are going to use these Chinese like I would use a calculator. Oh, yeah. That you get the idea, don't you? That, yeah, you'll use them to you know, create the quadratic formula <laughs> or to solve the uh, chemistry problem, but you won't put two unrelated things together to create the product in the first place. They'll just be the kind of machines that'll... that'll you know, fine tune it, but but they won't be creative, in my opinion. Yeah, not that some of them couldn't, but I don't think uh, that is going to help them. Although it certainly is better than the inner city school where the kid doesn't even learn to read and write. So right, get that. That is so true, man. The um, yeah, this book smart stuff that they're pushing is making people into yeah, highly functional in terms of um. Productive, but not creative, not, um, not with common sense, and that is true. I mean, China, is just, even though they are teaching them all this stuff, they're teaching them to be liberals, Marxists, and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I mean, so the same guy who learns how to do the advanced uh, chemistry or, or math problem also learns and plays back, you know, what's good and bad socially and governmentally and never really thinks for himself, you know, like right. he never thinks through communism and why it doesn't work and human nature. Human nature to them is whatever they learn human nature is. They never really observe and understand human nature. Yeah. Greg, man, your your phone is like way too muffled and in and out. Uh, uh, sorry but, about that. But I appreciate the points. Thank you, man. Okay. Thanks, Dave. All right. Take care. Bye. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of like when... um. When I'm correcting Jesse on his grammar, and meanwhile he's like giving you guys these deep points, and I'm like dumb, but I I know some stuff that he doesn't know. <laughs> it's just like intellectual stuff. That's what that's the difference. Um, and you know this this I was reporting about this. It was the top of the second hour about these Chinese China's school children are now the now the smartest according to this OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It's a globalist outfit, I think, and they're pushing, you know, for world trade and stuff like that. See? Globalist. And they're pushing this PISA study, P PISA's Program for International Student Assessment. And it was a dredge headline. They, they surveyed a bunch of students or tested a bunch of students, and the Chinese were doing the best, including even the poor Chinese kids, because they have these strict schools. And you're not allowed to have strict schools in America or these liberal countries. I mean, China's liberal too, but it's more like it's more like authoritarian, communist. But, anyways, um, yeah, and they have this Secretary General Jose Angel Gurria, and he's a Mexican economist and diplomat, the Secretary General of OECD. Um, it reminds me of the disproportionate focus on education without the focus on. Character, morality, common sense that is undermining all people. I mean, send my parents sent me to college, they thinking that it was going to do me a favor with um, career and stuff like that, or I don't know. You have more opportunities when you have a degree, doesn't even matter what degree it is, right? Was the rationale. But um, you get diluted, it's just your own little world, and it's serving so much, so little value. Um, <laughs> it's serving so little value. I mean, some people do earn and in, learn interesting things, but whatever. Let me get to some more calls. Chris out of Arizona. Chris, how are you? Hi, James. I'm great. How about you? Doing fine. Thank you for calling. I know I'm not quite on point with your topics today. Uh, no, you're fine. Um, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Carl Benjamin? Yes. He was really 
good um, interviewer this morning. Sargon of Akkad. Yeah. Yeah, I really, yeah. I've been wanting to hear Jesse Lee Peterson interview him for some time now. And so actually, are you the one? I'm sorry, go ahead. And actually, like, I wanted him to, I was thinking of having him on even when I was producer, when I didn't know that he agreed with Jesse in any way. And maybe he didn't even know that he agreed with Jesse in any way. But more recently, he's done, like, he did at least one um, full-on review of a conversation that Jesse had with a liberal black woman about um, white privilege. What does white privilege exist? And his title was, Black Women Need to Take Responsibility, something like that. <laughs> and it was a really... Nice. That was a, that's Jesse's message, is to take responsibility. Yeah. Anyways. And it surprises me that when people call in that disagree with Jesse, they don't hear the love, the true love in his voice. Yeah. I do. Cool. Through and through. He loves everybody, and I hear it. Yeah. With his corrections, with everything. Yeah. So uh, Carl Benjamin said that the birth, there was a study done that birth control pills was yeah. making women more attracted to weak men. That's interesting. I had heard that. That was, and I was interesting that he pushed that point because I had heard that, but I'd kind of forgotten about it. And I think that that's true. That's why you see these women going for betas and becoming, yeah. <laughs> basically becoming yeah. more liberal. It's kind of the equivalent of, of men or anybody who gets into pornography. Statistically speaking, like they become more liberal. They become accepting of LGBTQ mess which is accepting of evil, like hurting oh, the people so that are stuck in it. Yeah, it's <laughs> it crazy. really is gross, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's so, interesting. So, um, yeah, it's really, you know, it's really hard to find a true alpha male when you're out there. Um, I have met a couple, and usually they're in like um, high positions, yeah, uh, of command, if you will. Yep, and. But when I go out to eat dinner, when I'm out in public, they're few and far between. I really don't run into them. I think I only know two <laughs> right now. Yeah. Uh, well, three, including Jesse. Right. Nice. And one of the three, I'm not even sure. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I'm like, oh, he's turning beta quickly. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny. Like, women are always, like scrutinizing and figuring out wh whether a man is alpha or beta. <laughs> uh, not really. I never thought about it until I started listening oh, to Oh, that's funny. Maybe, thought about it before. Ma maybe you knew it without expressing it. Could be. Yeah. I think. I really don't know. I, I never think that analyzed. It's much. funny because I think that women really know what we're talking about because at one point I was arguing with this woman back when I used to argue a lot. I mean, I guess I still argue, right? But I was arguing with this woman that I knew from college, my age, right, or younger. Yeah. And um, I was talking about how women are illogical, whatever. And then she's like, "You're being a woman because such and such." I don't know. Ba basically, I was arguing with her, right? <laughs> I'm like, "Dang, that's actually a good point." <laughs> and hey, so, but she knew offended. that even though she's a feminist, she knew what I was talking about, and she agreed yeah. with what I was talking about about. Um, men acting like women. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, um, I know this might not be very popular, but do you want me to tell you how I I think Jesse is like a Catholic? I was raised Catholic. I'm non-practicing right now. And the only reason why I'm non-practicing is because I don't go to church every Sunday. That I do believe in the um, precepts of the church, for the most part. Um, we don't do birth control pills. Um, because it makes the, the womb hostile. Yeah. And sometimes the baby does get conceived, but because you're taking the birth control pill, it kills them. Wow. Yeah. Man, and, that's evil. But, huh? I said, man, that's evil. Yeah. We need more yeah. babies, not the fewer. The Protestants really don't, don't see that. They don't see it. Yeah. They don't know it. They haven't read the... Um, the documentation, and right. when I started having babies and giving them shots, there's, you know, mom's measles rubella yeah. has fetal cells in there. I'm like, oh, my God. Wow. You know? Yeah. 
So, you know, a, a, and the um, chicken pox vaccination does just, so does the shingles vaccination. Wow. I looked into it. Crazy. And I was, yeah. And it's very difficult to make the right decisions when it comes to getting your children vaccinated. When you know yeah. that it has dead babies in the, sorry, I'm going to say dead babies in, in the vaccine. Yeah. Man, but that's crazy. Just, <laughs> there are three things where Jesse reminds me of a priest, okay? Okay, go for it. When people call in, they're confessing everything to him. <laughs> Sometimes too much. By it. <laughs> Say that again? <laughs> they're getting healed. They're getting oh. healed by it, right? He's helping people. That's the same thing as going to um, confession. Interesting. But usually confession is, is like private. <laughs> but anyways... True, but you can call in and talk to Jesse and have a private um, counseling session. And when you go yeah. to confession, the priest does um, give you counsel. Yeah. And one time I went to a Franciscan for confession, and he said to me that my sins were not sins, they were symptoms. Interesting. And that sounds a lot like Jesse to me. Yeah, it kind of I mean, does. That's my opinion. Symptoms of the sin. Right, I guess, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't quite understand it, but the more I listened to Jesse, I'm like, okay, it's starting to make sense, you know? Yeah. And then the other thing, the silent prayer, I actually learned that when I was about 19 years old. The Catholics don't call it the silent prayer. We call it um, contemplative prayer. Ah. So I learned it back when I was a teenager and did it quite often, but not daily. And when I heard Jesse talking about the silent prayer, I'm like, whoa, another, you know, correlation to Catholicism. But And so know, uh, let me just interrupt. And so contemplative prayer is you're supposed to become aware of, of the, the thoughts and aware of your surroundings and aware of the present and stuff like that and aware not be of thinking the and worry? Correct. The, the, when I was being taught, it's like, okay, push those thoughts away. Oh, you were and told to push the thoughts away? It was, okay, maybe I'm using the wrong terminology. It was, I was only 19 at the time. I don't really remember clearly, but. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Just, but the, the thing that's different between the way Jesse does it is we were told to focus on a word. And I think that oh, might okay. be yeah, the different. wrong thing to do. It's more, um, I think the way Jesse does it is better, but. <laughs> I still have the same result when I do it the way Jesse does it. So, yeah. You know. All right. Um, I appreciate that input. That's interesting. Chris? Oh, and another thing. Um, in Catholics consider other religions Catholic as well. It's the small c where you're not confirmed into the church. So Baptist, Protestants, we consider, if you are Christian, we consider you all Catholic. Because Catholic means the universal church. Ah, okay. Does that make sense? All right. I did not know that. I appreciate that, Chris. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, take care. Bye. Let me quickly get to Joe out of Phoenix, Arizona. He's been on hold for some time, and uh, I appreciate it. Joe, what's up? Hey, James. Hey, good to hear Jesse, from you. Jesse rushed me off as usual when I'm exposing his ignorance and lies. <laughs> no, he's Colin. he's just he's just has to keep on moving. It was towards the end of the show, and no, so he rushed, he rushed me off normally. It's, it's normally, but because he's not this, he's not an intellectual, and he doesn't like this excuse making where um, you like to mm -hmm. you like to cite the exceptional people, the exceptions. And I, so I call them exceptional. I, I give information that I refute his nonsense is what I do. I don't, For example, I don't know. I mean, you can you can refute like little details, but you don't re really refute his main point. I absolutely do. Not at root, no. At root, yes. His, his claim was that Zimbabwe is suffering because black farmers are inept. Wrong. Nobody, black or white, can grow crops with no water drain. It's a drought. So then let me ask. Yeah. Is it true that the Zimbabwe people are asking the white farmers to come back? 
that part is true. Then? That's because, that's because they need more farmers than they have currently. It's not because they're better at farming. <laughs> See? But still, you, I mean, the, they're suffering regardless. Irregardless. That's not a word, right? But they're suffering word, because right. they, they do hate whites. And that is, that does cause suffering. Hate whites. Again, drought doesn't care if you're black or white. You can't grow a crop with no water. No, but I'm telling you, they're, they're suffering because they hate whites. Regardless of the drought, regardless of the drought, yes, that's yes, the drought is causing more of a of a challenge, right? It's kind of like hard times, kind of expose your weaknesses, and one of their weaknesses is they hated whites, and they took the land from the whites, kicked them out of whatever, and um, that's that that's what hard times do. So yes, the drought is true, but the point stands that they hated the whites, and that's what, a big problem in. Um, African countries that have whites in them that believe in this communism thing. I don't know where Zimbabwe stands exactly in terms of communism, mm. but the South African countries, so, I mean, South Africa is filled, is totally infiltrated with this communism belief stuff and this hatred of white people. And the, a, the ANC does have some communist right. elements. And, and that's another thing. Why does Jesse keep saying that blacks are now just now? taking over the ANC, came in to control in 1994. And it's been what a long years? decline. It has been a long decline. He didn't say, he didn't say that they just came into power. He said the, the blacks took o- or have been taken over, or the blacks took over and, and they've been pushing the whites out. And, they just, just because it, and he's been talking about this for a long time, in all honesty. He's been talking mm-hmm. about this before it exploded and went viral. Anyway. Yeah. He said there's no black inventions in the last 50 years. Mark Dean, IBM, another team that developed the first color computer monitor and the first gig, gig, gigahertz, yeah, excuse me, gigahertz chip. Okay? George Carruthers created the first ultraviolet camera and spectrograph using the Apollo mission. Dr. Patricia Bass created the... Um, Hello? You still there? Sorry, she did a, a laser. You find the laser cataract surgery. Okay, there's been plenty, plenty of advancement from black people the last 50 years. That's great. Those are exceptional individuals. And I don't know where they stand in terms of, of spiritually, politically, but... Um, well, who knows? But, but on the... You know, Jesse's claim that nothing has happened in the last 50, 50 years is bogus. It's but the, but you're citing, but you're that. citing, like, side notes to the to the major problems in the black community you know that there's major problems and that on the whole they've brought destruction they've been exploited sure. and you know that they've been exploited by the lgbt crap and stuff like that and you and know you they've know, been I exploited don't any of that i know you don't and i know that you know that they've been um sorry i was looking up at the tv you know that they've been look they've been exploited by these false cries of racism and stuff like that i know you don't i mean i generally think that you don't fall for that for the most part but they have it's 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 undeniable they've been hood hoodwinked by the democrat party it's it's so ridiculous i'm not a democrat either i I know i know but i'm just telling you I'm i'm not saying you are i'm just saying that the that the blacks on the whole have all fallen for that. And I say all because on, on the whole, meaning yeah, well, majority, meaning like 90 plus percent, 96 percent voted for Obama twice. Black people are Democrats because they mistrust states' rights. The states' rights, and historically speaking, have been mostly to their detriment. So they, they go with the Democrats instead, yeah, but, of, instead of the Republicans. But the, point is, but the point is, the point is they're suckers because they're suckers for evil. But the Democrat Party is evil. And yeah, well, most of the Republicans are evil too. I, I admit, yeah. but the um, but uh, the platform, the Republican platform, is for what's right. It went in terms of like what Jesse always says: God, family, morality, stuff like that. Yeah, so I, I agree with that. But there are some Dems who believe in that too. Fewer, but there are some who who believe in that. I know, but they're just they end up being tools for just communism. It's so. Uh, you heard Sargon of Akkad. Do you disagree with Sargon of Akkad, who said 
the liberals of, of the U.S. are, ba- are just communists? Uh, I didn't really listen to him. His voice kind of put, put me to sleep, so I kind of just ignored that. He, he that had a very video. beautiful voice. <laughs> Soothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Joe. Thank you for the, the facts about um, those things. But you really did not... Um, you're really not debunking what Jesse's point is. Well, I know you're not going to admit that, James, because you can't. <laughs> no, I can. But I can no, tell not. you that you're not. <laughs> you, don't see, no, you don't seem to see big picture. Thing, but... Look, look. I, the reason I know that you don't see big picture is you supported John Kasich over Trump. <laughs> that proves to I me that you don't see the big Kasich picture. Would, would, have, would have been a much better president because he would have got along better with Congress and got things done. Like I said, the reason why, why, why Trump is ineffective is because he insults people and goes scorched stories on people, and then, then he tries, well, they won't, won't, won't work with me. Well, of I, course they won't. You, you, you insult them and, and, and everything else. I rest my case. <laughs> anyway, Joe, case? What do you mean? I mean that um, the things that you're saying, you don't see that Trump is actually true, quite effective. Yeah. You, you don't really see that really? Trump is actually quite effective. He, but anyways. Really? Yeah. No health care, no wall. We're paying the wall for is it, happening. Mexico, but we're paying for it. No, not, Mexico not will pay for it. They will pay for it. Believe no, me. No, they won't. You don't know that. You can't predict the future. You may be no smart. Ban. You may be intellectually um, adept, but you cannot mm-hmm. predict the future. So don't be overstepping, Joe. Anyways, man, I gotta go. Appreciate you. All right, go ahead, man. Take All care. Right. So. Man, I wanted to get to some of this stuff, but uh, I have so many interesting calls. Um, let me go get to Lionel or Lionel. Lionel out of Brooklyn, New York, first time caller. How are you? Yo, what's, I, hey, what's up? What's up? How you doing, James? Doing fine. How do you pronounce your first name? Lionel. Lionel. Not Lionel with Thundercat, but Lionel. <laughs> All right. Appreciate that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So what's yes, up? Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I first time calling, and I had called in to talk to Peterson um, to let him know how I appreciate the show. But they nice. told me about your show, and I'm familiar with you too. And to give an input of Donald Trump and how you know black people are being programmed to hate him, I feel like the black liberalism is a poison state of mind for the community, not just in the upper, you know, upper class, but in the lower class in the hood. Like there's a lot of cats that think that, you know, the white man this, and it's all about us and everything. And sometimes I'll be trying to bring logic, but it's just that they're so egotistical that they overlook the factualities, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I do know what you mean. Like, they, people really, in fact, it's not just blacks. Everybody, nobody actually cares about facts. Um, mm-hmm. They, they care about what they, what they see or don't see. And oh, my feelings. I feel the right, way yeah. I feel like bull crap, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's yeah. true. And yeah, but so it is like, it is so funny because I, I people get frustrated, especially whites, when they're arguing with the black because when they try to bring stats about black crime, they'll say, "Oh, who 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 got that from? That's the FBI. The FBI lies exactly. and stuff like that." <laughs> they just exactly. they'll just make up any excuse not to believe your evidence. So you have exactly. to. That's why Jesse's so powerful because he just cuts through the crap and doesn't really care about about facts. He cares about the truth, and so exactly he tells what's it. right and what's right for yeah. humanity. You know, the human race, not just specific. This that is the hum, it's based on humanity and the right thing to do. You know, right? Yep. Did you used to be liberal, or have you always been pretty conservative? Um, no, um, I really don't cling to um, the different parties, but if I was a person into that, I would have been a conservative to, cause due to understanding how the liberals do. And yeah. with the, um, Dwayne Wade and, and the Gabby Union, like the, the son turning him gay and promoting beta, net, beta males, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing like, to watch the people in their fallen state. But... um. I like what y'all doing. It's just that the whole, as I said, the black liberalism is a poison. It's poison to the community. And white people that cling to these um, victim black people, oh, yeah, they went through it. I know. They, them, they themselves has been bullied and suckered and been programmed to, to baby these type of um, black liberals, which is a shame. You feel yeah. me? And as Jesse Lee said, 
they're being bullied. And it's, it's a fact. And, you know, certain white people is that they don't want to feel like, you know what, I'm, I don't want them to call me. A- uh, L- Lionel, you, you, cut a, you cut out, Lionel. Yeah, hello? There you go. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Um, what did you hear what I said? Yeah, you just cut out the last 10 seconds. Oh, okay, okay. Um, no, I was talking about the white people that are being bullied and, and being programmed to, to baby these, these victim black people are themselves is doing damage to themselves because they're yeah. not stepping up, you know? They, they don't want to feel like, oh, I'm going to be called a racist and this and that. It's not about that. It's about standing for what's right. And what's logic, not emotions and feelings and all that, you know? It's no wonder that the whites, the younger whites and some of the older whites are getting, are getting, they're turning alt-right, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but they're turning, yeah, yeah. like, angry. And they're, they're like the rebellious children that they're right in their criticisms of, excuse me, they're right in their criticisms of the, the establishment Republicans and the standard conservatives and, of course, mm-hmm. the liberals. But they're just, they're so disappointed in the boomers, you know? <laughs> and yeah, um, it's, it's, it's no sad. wonder they're just, it's an overreaction. And that's, I think, why they're attracted to Jesse's message. Because Jesse's telling, telling them they're right, just don't be angry about it. Yeah, just forgive your mother or your father, or just forgive whatever's happening in your life, yep. you know? Yeah. And make amends to that and stuff, you know? And that they just have to, like, get over their ego and their feelings and start thinking more logic, you know? Yeah. I feel like everybody has to be higher than their ego than letting their ego be higher than them. Yeah. You feel me? I appreciate it, Lionel. Very good yes. points. Oh, yes. Um, I do have a podcast, um, an Anchors Radio. Me and okay. my friend, we talk about a logical thing. Um, it's called um, Ace Omni, um, Anchor Radio, um, GOTM Gathering of the Minds. Okay. Where we talk about a lot of logical things, and then we got inspired by Jesse Lee Peterson. So, nice. Um, you know, so I will be calling back again, and um, it was amazing. Right okay. on, Lionel. <laughs> Take right. care, man. All right. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Right. Let me get to Rick out of Hampton, Virginia, and then I will get to Rufus and the rest of you guys um, after I get to, maybe I'll get to a point. Rick. Hey, what's up? James. What's going on, James? Not much. Good to hear from you. Good. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving, brother. Yes, I did. How about you? Yeah, well, well, matter of fact, it was good. What about so fast, though, man? You yeah, it definitely did. Lies, <laughs> man. Uh, but yep. sure, I got a question for you. Why is everybody mad at Chick Fil A, man? They said they endorsed a godless organization. Who was that organization they endorsed? I have not looked into it because I've kind of lost interest in them. But mm-hmm. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, chat, that it was the SPLC, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Is that true, everybody? Can you can somebody Google that and verify? I think that they they have this black liberal guy who joined their um, community engagement or something like that um, thing in 2011, and so since then he's kind of steered them awry. You know they're white, weak. This one, you know, Chris, so-called Christian, but vanilla. And I say vanilla. I like vanilla, but vanilla, I say, I mean it in like a beta way. They're like the beta type Christians. They're nice, but they're so pathetic. They, um, they get pushed around by blacks and women. (laughs) Say it again. (laughs) You you say they like marshmallows. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Oh, man. man. Because, you know, I'm like this. They stood up before when it came to the same sex deal. They stood up. Sort of. The only, you remember, you remember, um, when they had the situation with the same sex. You know what? I remember them even backing down there, if you want to be perfectly honest, because Dan Cathy, I think, was the guy who did it. He's like the president Mm -hmm. or something like that of Chick-fil-A, a a top guy. Uh Uh-huh. And he's all guilty as charged, he said in some interviews, about that he supports families, traditional families, real marriage, stuff like that. Yeah. And then... After all this backlash against Chick-fil-A itself, not Dan Cathy, about Ch- against Chick-fil-A, because they're trying to take uh-huh. Chick-fil-A down, Chick-fil-A right. st- said in a statement during that time, as I recall, and my memory should be serving me correctly, that they're going to mm. stay out of politics. S- or Dan Cathy may have even said, going to stay out of politics. And, yeah, of course, I guess uh, a 
Stop with the air quotes, please, says Jeanette Korzenko. I'm sorry, it's a bad habit. <laughs> but, um, they're gonna stay out of so-called politics. Now I'm so tempted to use the air quotes. Stay out of politics. And that's, oh. that's, yes, uh, a business should not really be pushing politics because they are a business first, and the politically dumb people do eat chicken sandwiches too, but... Yeah. But still, that's to me that was a backing down. To me, you know what? Um, you, you know, a lot of people try and do it. Jay. There's no way you can separate God from nothing. They are trying to do. Yeah. Like a, I, I have a lot of. There, I'm, I'm a firm believer. You cannot be a Christian and be a Democrat. You know what they support, right? I, I really believe these, especially these black pastors. They sit up there and say, they screaming at Trump. And I and I really believe that the Democratic Party is using the Black Baptist churches with yeah. their programs. Yeah, man. Yesterday I reported about Pete Buttigieg, the homosexual. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh man, South Bend, Indiana mayor. State. That's the sad thing about that. He went to the. He visited on Sunday, I guess, the mm-hmm. church, so-called church of Reverend William Barber II, who was the president of the NAACP out of. North Carolina, and now he's running this wannabe help the poor people organization that was, it's kind of like a, it's like an imitation of what MLK founded right before he died, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just, these liberals are just, I think they're so guilt-ridden because they do promote evil and support evil and they are evil within, that they're guilt-ridden and so they think they're solving their guilt, salving, meaning like soothing their guilt guilty feelings by yeah. so-called, co- oh gosh, I don't want to do the air quotes, helping the poor. I'm so controlled yeah. by Jeanette Kozenko. <laughs> um, yeah, helping the poor. Yeah, and it's not even really helping the poor, they're just enabling the poor most of the time, and making them feel like you know, victims. Supporting Democrats. So, go ahead, James. Supporting Democrats is what they're doing. Yeah, you know, I, you know, even when, when I voted Democrat, I'm going to say deep down I was a conservative. Yeah. But I didn't wake up till I was 29. I'm 50 today. And um, I, and um, I, I heard Jesse on Sean Hannity's show, and um, I started listening to the show and Rush Limbaugh. Nice. And Sean Hannity. And I'm like, wow, man, you know, think about it, man. Just It's just like the liberals control everything, seem like, man. Like, even in the media, everything, yep. no one even records, like President Trump. He donates his salary to yeah. charity. And you hear the, the, the media don't even mention nothing at all about that. Right. Yeah, I, heard, know, I heard the other day he donated it to some aspect of, you know, something that, something that they're doing, the government or something. <laughs> but, yeah, it's true. Man. They don't, Man it's- they don't care about what's right. They're just against, they're promoting only people on their side. Yep, that's it. That's all it is. And, I appreciate um, it, Rick. No problem, James. Man, I know I talk your head. I would love you, man. Keep up the good work, though, James. Thank Don't you, man. Report. <laughs> la la la. <laughs> all talk right, I appreciate later, it, Rick. Bro. Take care. Bye. Rufus, out of Kansas. Rufus, how yeah, are you? What's up, James? I'm no. great, James. How are you? I'm doing fine. All right. Shout out to the chat room. In the chat room, I'm Uncle Thomasaurus. <laughs> okay, Uncle Thomasaurus, um, nice. Yeah. Hey, well, check it out, man. Um, I don't know if you guys discussed this at all, but Billy D. Williams coming out as Trent, uh, as gender fluid at 82 years old. Uh, have you guys discussed that at all? I, not to my knowledge, they may. The Jesse Lee Peterson show may have. I did not. Uh, I saw it mentioned on Twitter. Somebody sent me a tip, but I didn't look into it yet. Billy D. Williams yeah. is the 82 year old actor, artist, singer. He played Lando. He played Lando in the Star Wars film franchise. Right. He first you appeared in the Empire scene, Strikes Back, 1980. You remember that scene where he's, where he's hugging Han Solo and makes you wonder? N- no, I didn't. I don't remember that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I see a CNN headline. I'm just Googled it, right? I see a CNN headline Billy D. Williams praised for using gender fluid. Pronouns. That's weird. So what they've done is they've got another uh, black man. Yeah. It seems like there's a trend with them attacking black men and, and convincing them to put on 
and feminize themselves. Yeah. You know, black men are typically ultra masculine. Right. They found a way to, uh, try to persuade be. so many of us to, to give that up. Yep. Yeah, that is true. Even the even like the thugs <laughs> are getting more and more effeminate uh, every every generation, right? <laughs> like I mean, the Gen X thugs. Basketball players wearing dresses. And... Right. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's messed up. They do definitely promote the so-called transgender blacks and the and the homosexual blacks like crazy in the in the media including the black run media it's not the just the jewish run media guys some of you guys like to blame the jews for for well, being the only ones got, pushing everything got, or the main ones pushing everything but um we got tyler perry yeah the whole thing he started off as a as a media right so everything he's ever done has stemmed from being a, a trans <laughs> at least a cross-dresser. cross-dresser anyway yeah yeah, that's uh, he plays a pretty good Medea, like Big Mama type. But yeah, well, it you is. Could, you can tell he he hasn't been around many men. It's a uh, total right. surrender of dignity. It is such a shame. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate the tip. I uh, yeah, that's such a shame. And he's eighty-two years old, buying What's into this stuff. Evil. What's well, the point at that age? I mean, he's he's so close to the finish line. <laughs> I mean, if he was my dad or my granddad, I'd rather him just go go to his grave and just lie to us. Don't don't tell us that. Right. Anything with that. Yeah. Man. Well, I appreciate it, Rufus. Thank you, man. All right. Yep. Take All right. Care. You too. So, um, I am slightly concerned because, well, I mean, I guess we've already known this for a while. Like, there's establishment-type stuff creeping into MAGA, and I guess everybody knows it's kind of old news, right? But it reminds weakness sneaking into, like, the push to make America great again. I mean, because it's an inspiring message, Trump's message, or maybe the most of what he's trying to do, right, is right. And so, like, there's weak people that are like, yeah, I agree with what's right, I'm just weak. But they're they think that their weakness is right sometimes. And it reminds me of how most Christians and conservatives are so weak that we're like basically indistinguishable in how we live our lives from the liberals and the non-Christians, the atheists, Muslims, everybody. Um, I talked about this story at the top of the third hour today, Tuesday, December 3rd. Drudge reports Republican Georgia governor was set to snub Trump with a Senate pick. And he picked, I think this guy, I forget what his name was, but this Republican governor, Kemp, Brian Kemp, I think, he picked this Kelly Loeffner, Loeffler guy, woman, Kelly Loeffler, L-O-E-F-F-L-E-R, friend of Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams being that black female, kind of fat woman, who was promoted by Oprah and all these liberals, she wouldn't even surrender that she, she wouldn't even acknowledge that she lost fair and square. She kept on blaming so-called voter suppression. She's black, liberal. And this woman, Kelly Loeffner, Loeffler, also donated to Mitt Romney big money, $750,000. Man, makes this all look like betas, right? She's able to donate all that money. Shameful. And she donated to Paul Ryan and all that stuff. Two of the worst rhinos you can think of. Uh, we have super chats, but we'll pass them to Jesse Lee Peterson, right? For tomorrow. We will read the, the super chats that have come in for Jesse Lee Peterson's show tomorrow, guys. But President Donald Trump preferred... A, so this guy... This guy um, is retiring from the Senate. I guess he has Parkinson's or something. I don't know that how she looks, but that is probably her. Is I think she's an owner of some oh, yeah. basketball team out of Atlanta or something like that. And that's what I gather. But President Trump prefers a guy named Doug Collins. Google Doug Collins. He seems like a solid guy. At least he talks like one, right? You, did, you never know. He's a Republican from Georgia. Um, he's, a, he's the Republican congressman from Georgia, and Trump wants him to be the senator. So he may run for senator um, to oust her. 
But, like, here are some names of these sort of establishment, very conservative, but they're esta- there's Doug Collins, but they're like establishment types. March for Life, the Susan B. Anthony list, and the reason that I name those two is in particular, they're promoting Doug Collins too, right? And so they're right in this thing, I think. And the Tea Party Patriots. But March for Life, Susan B. Anthony list, aren't those the ones, especially Susan B. Anthony list, I think that they opposed Trump early on. They're like anybody but Trump. And then later I think they realized that Trump is actually better than they thought. But they are like establishment conservatives. And maybe I'm being too harsh. Maybe I need to cut these boomers some slack. A little bit of slack. Or at least not judge them, right? But um, I just noticed that there's a whole lot of people, clingers on to the, let's call it MAGA movement, that are just weak. Um, let me quickly make this point about this accuser. I, I said that in kind of too high of a voice. <laughs> I reminded myself of that MSNBC um, host who's not Rachel Maddow, but anyways, just a side note. Um, he sounds like borderline, like, never mind, let's just... Let's just move on. Drudge reports the Epstein's book. There's an Epstein book that is spilling secrets that's just released today. Um, and Prince Andrew is being scrutinized heavily by the media because the media is promoting this interview by this victim woman. Google Virginia Roberts and just show a picture of her. Virginia Roberts Dufre. And I've played clips of her over, I think, the summertime maybe before that, where she was promoting being a victim herself because she was supposedly recruited and sex trafficked as a teenager, 15, 16 years old, of Jeffrey Epstein by Ghislaine Maxwell, his madame, whatever, his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. There's Virginia Roberts Jufre. Today, you know, roughly, I guess this year, at, um, at thir- age 35, and then she's showing a photograph of herself from when she was supposedly 17 years old um, with and you know part of the crew of Jeffrey Epstein and she claims that she was his sex slave and trafficked sex trafficked and she claimed without evidence by the way that she had sex with this guy that she's seen in a photo with and this guy's name is Prince Andrew Probably a liberal, you know, but he's like British so-called royalty. And the royalty is like, I don't know. But this guy is in so much trouble because of all these rumors and things. And he hasn't really given good answers when scrutinized by the media. So he was asked by the queen and I think his nephew kind of orchestrated it, another prince guy, um, to kick kicked out of the kick, kicked out of the royalty, at least take a break from his duties. But anyways, like, she w- she broke down crying on this BBC thing. My focus is not on him. He probably is evil, who knows? Probably. He was hanging out with the Democrat Jeffrey Epstein. And Jeffrey Epstein did plead guilty, like, he did have to register as a sex offender for some reason. But this woman is crying and claims to be disappointed that royalty would do this. She claimed that she had sex with him and that it was gross, but that he wasn't mean. So she's like talking out of both sides of her mouth, giving nasty details that I don't feel that she needs to be giving about him being sweaty or something like that. But I wonder what her husband thinks, because she went off and got married. She got away from Epstein. She escaped. She was supposed to recruit some girl, supposedly, according to her. But she just, instead, she eloped and ran off with her husband. Now she has children. I wonder what her husband and children think of this lady, Virginia Roberts, going around to the media, like, talking like this. And I also wonder how old she claimed to be at the time. A lot of runaways and wild girls, as she was, she was had a messed up family situation, uh, have these issues where um, they, they're not honest with you about their age. They're 15, but they say they're 18. So I'm just curious. The media is hyping this. The media is evil. 
They're an ex- but this is all like an extension of the hashtag Me Too movement. That's how I see it, so I'm not really on board with either side. I think they're both evil people fighting each other. Anyways, um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I have more stuff for you. Make sure you um, ring the set the reminder for the Bond Rebuilding the Man premiere. Bond Rebuilding the Man premiere, which is coming out, I think, tonight at 5.30, unless it gets postponed. But 5.30 is what the scheduled time is for Los Angeles time. All right, guys. Take care.